perfect. perfect. Yo, what it do, everybody? It's your man Dre, aka Dre on Wheels. Y'all already know what it is. Welcome back, everyone, to the 1130 podcast, Talk Pro Wrestling. How everybody doing out there? What's goody? Yes, we back at it. I'm back at it. It's Friday. The weekend is upon us, so it's time to talk some pro wrestling. Good morning, good night, good afternoon to all my listeners all across the world, wherever you may be at. Uh, this morning, this afternoon, you know, um, but I'm glad you are joining me back here for Talk Pro or Wrestling, um, whether you listen on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and you're watching on YouTube today, this Friday afternoon. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much. If you're new to the 1130 podcast and you haven't done so already, please hit that subscribe button down below. That'll do me a favor to help continue to grow the 1130 podcast. And uh, please leave a comment. Tell me what you think, what you like, what you don't like man for real i love the feedback i want to continue doing the feedback i love everyone who support the 1130 podcast dre on wheels man for real we had it <laughs> but uh nonetheless man i'm gonna get into it uh i'm riding so low though low doing zoom this week here um but nonetheless nonetheless i got some uh topics and trending uh wrestling topics that i want to dive into this week yes this is my week that i'm gonna talk my crap talk my shit you feel me here on talk pro wrestling but man Man, oh man, what a week we have uh, seen in wrestling. It's just been a whole lot of headlines from um, last Friday on SmackDown to uh, um, this Friday, you know, with everything going on, man. But we're going to jump it in with, uh, I think, the headline of the show that everyone was talking about uh, this past week on AEW. Yes, man, AEW Dynamite this past Wednesday was off the chain, man. One of the better shows that I've seen in a long time with uh, AEW Dynamite kicked it off uh, with Eddie Kingston, excuse me, kicked it off with Chris Jericho actually coming out there looking real slim. You know, he lost some weight and stuff. Um, just, you know, talking to the fans and how that he, he didn't, you know, keep his promise at Revolution and didn't shake Eddie Kingston's hand and you want to call uh, Eddie Kingston out to come out there, you know, shake his hand. And Eddie came out there with a good reception and everything, man. The crowd loved him. Chatting Eddie, you know, I thought the matchup at Revolution was brilliant between the two. Uh, of course, it, the ending kind of was a little botched. But nonetheless, man, it was great. And I said this on Commission Talk this past uh, Wednesday on Off the Top Roads podcast with my guy Blackheart and Warren Marlow with – yeah, Eddie Kingston, you know, I, I feel like this victory that he uh, took and this victory that he uh, got this past Sunday in Orlando, Florida was a huge, huge victory beating Chris Jericho. Uh, man, like it, it was really huge because the last couple of guys and Eddie said it in his promo, man, like he, 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 he was battling. He was battling something and he was he was about to call it quick. He was about to call a quit. He wasn't going to show up to Revolution, man. He was going to do a no-show. And, bro, like, people called him and said, yo, Eddie, man, like, man, you you are inspiration, bro. Like, you can't give up. You really can't give up. And, you know, and he went out there not doing it for Jericho, not doing it for himself, you know, but doing it for the people who believe in him, man. And, and, and screw all the little fans, you know, who want to just keep saying what, what? Because I was getting sick and tired of that shit. I'm like, really, man? You're just going to keep saying what? Let the guy, you know, pull his promo. He said it's about to get deep. You feel me? Like, and, and some of the wrestling fans out there, they killed the, the vibe of the promo because they just want to keep chatting. What, what, what? And I like how Eddie was like, man, yo, man, Steve Austin ain't here right now, man. Just, you know, he, he didn't do no disrespect. Just like, he ain't here. Just chill, man. For real. Like, I, I want to say what I got to say. But, uh, yeah, Dynamite, dope that, you know, he came out there and said what he said. Like I said, uh, Eddie Kingston couldn't get through CM Punk. He couldn't get through Brian Danielson. Uh, Eddie Kingston, he, he couldn't get through, you know, all these big competitors. And it, it was sort of like a roadblock going on. And he expressed on Dynamite um, that, uh, yo, man, I, I just wanted to go to the bar. I just wanted to go to bar and just feed that addiction, man. And for everybody, man, look at man. I, I used to drink alcohol, man, like crazy, bro. I, I I was on it, man. Like waking up, I'm trying to, you know, take a shot and just ease the pain because it was just rough. But nothing for me, nothing for me, though. <laughs> but yeah, Eddie Kingston, 
you know, I love the promo that he pulled out there. And I love the fact that he, he said to Jericho, look here, bro, like, you don't want to shake my hand. Don't That don't sound like a, a me problem. No, that ain't Eddie Kingston problem. I went out there. I did what I said I was going to do. I proved you. I proved you wrong. You know, I went out there. I lasted maybe, what, 15, 20 minutes, however long the match was. And I showed up. I won the match. I beat you. You, you feel me? Because all the, the, the narrative was about Eddie Kingston is that he's a bum. He don't train. He's in catering. He does this. So, you know, the fact that Jericho did not shake his hand, obviously, I, I felt Eddie Kingston, man. I was like, bro, that's a you problem, Jericho. Something going on with you. And the problem was that Jericho still didn't admit, you know, because, you know, we've seen the whole Jericho Appreciation Society come about. But Jericho did not shake his hand because he was ashamed of losing to Eddie Kingston. You know, he was ashamed to lose into a guy who don't want to work out and uh, don't uh, want to sit and catering and just want to go to the bar and just, you know, like not putting this all like he was ashamed that he lost it. And by 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 saying by, by actually saying it, but not saying it, uh, outcomes, you know, uh, uh, power, proud and powerful. I mean, I, yeah, outcome proud and powerful, but outcomes 2.0 and Danny Garcia and Jericho, you know, he turns on, uh, you know, proud and powerful and, you know, he turned on Eddie Kingston. I kind of, I've seen that happen from a mile away. I seen whatever was going on between them two. If nobody came to the ring, I knew that Jericho was going to do some funny stuff to Eddie Kingston. Like it wasn't over. So man, 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 I, I love how that started out. On uh, Dynamite, we also seen Warlow, you guys, because this past Sunday, Warlow won uh, the Revolution match. He is the face of the Revolution. Uh, last thing now, guys, is Ricky Starks, Keith Lee. That spot was crazy, man. Sammy Guevara, a, a bunch of guys that was in that ladder match. Man, it was it was real sick. But, man, War, it's Warlow time. He's going to the top right here. And not only he's going to the top, his breakout moment was – uh, when he came down to sort of assist MJF, or which we thought, and uh, you know, MJF was like, Yo, pass me the diamond ring, I need the diamond ring. You feel me? Like, I pay you all this, all this money to, to help me, and you're gonna sit there and look stupid. So, you get down there to ringside, try to pull out, Oh man, I don't know what pocket is it? Oh, is it this? I don't have it, I don't know, <laughs> you know, and, and that was just so brilliant. brilliant. And then CM Punk takes the advantage for a moment in the moment of the match. And Warlow, you know, oh, I found it. I'm just going to leave this right here. <laughs> and that was dope. You know, that, that was his moment after just winning uh, the diamond, I mean, winning the, uh, the ladder match and also breaking out right there from MJF. And after he said, and what he said, on a dynamite, <laughs> uh, you know, I don't need you no more, man. I really don't need you. Thank you. Thank you, but I don't need you no more. So Warlow is going to the top. He will take on Scorpio Sky. Yes, he will take on Scorpio Sky next week. Next week on Dynamite. So that's going to be a brilliant match. Shout out to Scorpio Sky. I'm not going to do my man like Lump Lump. We all know Warlow is uh, coming up right now in the ranks in AEW. But Scorpio Sky, with a long time coming. And the crazy thing was uh, with, with the nameplate, Showed that, and, and actually, commentary said, My man Scorpio Sky ain't lost the match in 364 days. So I was like, Okay, well, uh, are they gonna jinx him or is he gonna win that one more match tonight or Wednesday night? And um, uh, you know, it would be a whole four years since he lost the match, but you know, it was a whole four years since Scorpio Sky, and you know, over a whole four year now, over a whole four year now. Uh, that he uh, haven't lost the match. He is now the new TNT champion. Yes, hard hitting matchup. Obviously, you know you had uh, Dan Lambert and you know all the other guys, Ethan Page, and you know the whole crew outside the ring, and you know trying to distraction whatever, whatever. But yeah, he beat Sammy Guevara. Yo, one thing came up in my mind when I saw this match and I was like, yo, why is Tay Conte out there trying to help him? And yeah, I know everybody's saying, that's his girlfriend, that's his girlfriend. 
I did not know. And uh, something clicked to me. I was like, wait a minute. And uh, I did remember hearing that Sammy Guevara and his fiance at that time, which he proposed on Dynamite, was, you know, he's young. You know, I was like, uh, oh, okay, but, <laughs> but hey, yo, they not they, they they not together no more. They split. So his new girlfriend is Tay Conte. So I was like, okay. So shout out to Scorpio Sky, who is the new TNT champion, man. That was that was really dope. That was that was the end of the show. But man, like it was way more that went on on the show. Speaking of Jeff Hardy, you guys, Jeff. Jeffrey Nero Hardy, as my man Jim Ross said, when the music hit, I was like, okay, Jeff Hardy got to be coming out, but I'm like, hey, what music is he going to come out to? But that, dun -dun 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 -dun. Hey, I was like, oh shit, I went wild though. No, but hey, yo, that's, that's what's up. A lot of people, you know, some people don't like it, obviously, calling AEW the new WCW. Look at, I said it though, no, but I'm just, look at here on the podcast here at the 11 30 podcast talk pro wrestling i chat about all wrestling you know i love wrestling it don't matter what it is now if you dislike what i might say or dislike what i may talk about it's other great podcasts out there such as off the top roads podcast such as the dirty hills podcast such as the job of tears podcast it's just the clock street it's so many podcasts out there wrestling podcasts that talk about oh what different variety a range of stuff now if you just here to just hear and just enjoy wrestling talk man this is the place man for real this is the place but some people would just like oh, man jeff hardy does no good i mean hey look at jeff hardy looked it amazing and he was just happy to see his brother man you we all know when we haven't seen a person for x amount of time and that hug that you give them man that wasn't like a hug just like oh yeah you're my brother no that was a hug it's like i miss you you know because they at the time that you know we're working for two different companies and obviously probably had to stay apart because of you know the whole covid and traveling you know stuff like that but not even that probably just Jeff, you do your thing i'm gonna do my thing and when we see each other it's gonna be real dope so man like it was real awesome to see him come out there to have the music and stuff and now um the matchup that it seemed like it's going to happen or first up is sting and darby allen i heard a lot of people um you know clowning uh the look the Sting gave uh jeff hardy when jeff hardy got in the ring like oh shit, here, here go this son of a bitch <laughs> you know for some people who don't know back in tna back in the tna days where jeff hardy wasn't in a very very uh great spot in his, his life and in his career um yeah he, and he was you know intoxicated coming to the ring and stuff like that and you know you're working with a legend such as thing bro like you you need to be with your head on straight my guy like but you know hopefully that could be all be bygones obviously you know he, you know said yo man glad to be in the ring with you again you know but jeff hardy back not only jeff hardy made his debut on dynamite this week William Regal, you guys. Yes, William Regal made his debut uh, this past Sunday at AEW Revolution, where uh, after John Moxley and Brian Danielson finished knocking each other heads off, like literally, they were just knocking each other heads off. Um, but yeah, how come William Regal and like, yo, man, y'all gotta, like, y'all gotta put this together? And a couple of people been saying this throughout the wrestling groups and also on Commission Talk, like. Yeah, man, these guys are going to be a tag team. Look, I didn't see this coming at all. I didn't see this coming at all. But back to William Regal, I thank William Regal for coming on Dynamite. And so what? You might have went a little longer on your promo, but the simple fact, you explained everything. And man, I love the story. Like, I love people who, who's a great storyteller. You could tell William Regal is a great storyteller, just the way he talked, you know? See how the success with NXT was, you know? And, and you know, Triple H was there. All right, but nonetheless, uh, yo, William Regal, man, was like, yo, I'm, I'm glad to be here. You know, been X amount of years since I seen you, Tony Giovanni, and, you know, been, you know, I'm, I'm back here in wrestling now. I'm, I'm no longer needed at my old job. But every time he spoke about, or every time Brian Danielson spoke, he, you know, and it was about wrestling, he mentioned William Regal and vice versa. And, you know, he's seen Brian Danielson in AEW, 
And seeing John Moxley then was like, yo, man, I got to be here, man. The, the best wrestler that I wanted to be. Like, he, he's the wrestler. He's the best wrestler. And everything he was just saying, man, I just, I, I loved it, man. Yeah, everybody undervalued attention like he was a school teacher or a professor. Like, I was, yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. But, yo, man, that is dope. I want to see what was to come with Brian Danielson and John Moxley, man, as a tag team in uh, AEW. So that's going to be dope, man. Dynamite was off the chain, man. It really was. Really was off the chain. Thunder Rosa won her matchup. I was talking on commission also telling the guys, man, like, yo, man, I didn't really see her winning at the pay-per-view this last Sunday. But now that she got that rematch, and, you know, Britt Baker said, like, you should go right to the back of the line. But who else is the challenge? Britt Baker. But Thunder Rose is the, you know, next hottest women's wrestler in AEW. So I feel like the next time they wrestle since Thunder Rosa has won, she will capture the AEW, the new AEW Women's Championship. I like it. I really like it, though, man, for real. Uh, but, man, like I said, man, that was dope. I, I like AEW Revolution, everything that went down uh, from Hangman Adam Page retaining the title, the tag team title match. Look at me. I, I loved it. Everything. Man. I liked it all. Um, speaking of what I liked this past weekend, what some people didn't like. <laughs> NXT, you guys. Yes, NXT 2.0 went down this past Tuesday. And it was an NXT championship match. A triple threat NXT championship match between the champion, Braun Breaker, Tommaso Ciampa. And uh, also, it was between... Uh, Dolph Ziggler. Yes. Raw superstar Dolph Ziggler. And we've been seeing it over the couple of weeks. Dolph Ziggler has been appearing in NXT, you know, trying to pop a ratings or two, you know, get some spike to it. And hell, what, 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 what is Dolph Ziggler doing anyway? Uh, the matchup that they had last week, the tag team matchup on NXT. I love how Bobby Roo came out to his glorious. I thought that was cool. So I was like, yo, man, if he gonna come out to that, put Bobby back in. Like, I mean, they not really doing too much on Raw. Like the Raw Tag Team Championship, uh, you know, space is occupied right now with what's going on there. But yo, I dig it, man. But yo, Dolph Ziggler wins the NXT Championship. I didn't see this coming at all. It was left field man left field so so left field but i like it though i like it i like it because it gives it's a buzz now it's a buzz so now obviously this past obviously now coming this monday Dolph Ziggler will be on Monday Night Raw, and he will show up as the NXT champion. He's going to pull a promo, and, and word is they're supposed to be bringing Bond Breaker up to uh, the main roster real soon. Obviously, they had him on Raw this past Monday, teaming with uh, Champa. But, yo, man, I thought this was way left field, man. I, I was like, they, they just put the title on Bond Breaker, um, what, not too long ago, where Bond Breaker defeated Champa for the title. And uh, yo, and for Dolph Ziggler to come in, and I mean, look at when he came in in NXT and he said what he said to Tommaso Ciampa, I thought it was like, yo, I mean, where's the lie? Like, where's the lie? My man said, yo, Tommaso Ciampa, you want to be stuck here. Like, you don't want to go to the main roster. You just want to be in Florida. Same as people each and every week. You just want to be here. So I was like, oh, like he got a point, though. He got a point. And then obviously, it go the new guy. You know the new guy, Braun Breaker, though. <laughs> but Dolph Ziggler, though. And, and I think it was also desperation, too, though. Dolph's desperation, people was like, ah, oh, man, you know, uh, why did uh, why did, why did Tommaso had to take the pin? Why Braun Breaker couldn't take the pin? You know, I already don't know, man. Uh, the Dusty, the Dusty, Women's Dusty Cup tag team matchup, man, that was a brilliant match. Brilliant match, too, but whoo. I, I really don't know, man. Like, that was, like, commentary was so shocked. After the matchup, everybody, you faces were just going crazy. And commentary just was shocked. Then, you know, like, you know that shock feeling. And then the ring announcer said something like a minute later after the match was over. And no, okay, it's official. Like, all right. Man, like, that was crazy, man. Like, that was wild. So, 
hey man, this is something to talk about. It, it gets you tuning back into NXT. That's if you're a fan of NXT. Look, I'm a fan of it. I like it. I enjoy it. So I, I love, I love that that value of what's next. So what's next? So we're gonna tune in to see uh what's next. Speaking of what's next, uh KO, you guys, KO ended Monday Night Raw with a challenge, a huge challenge, not a small challenge, a huge challenge to want to protect his own, man, for real. And we left Raw off with the question mark of what's next? Will Stone Cold accept Kevin Owens' challenge at WrestleMania? Well, KO said, yo, man, I don't like Texas. Booker T, you suck, sucker. JBL, I ain't got time for you. Shawn Michaels, Look at I like Brett more, <laughs> but Stone Cold like he had changed he, he throughout the challenge. The Stone Cold look at I know everybody got everything to say about this. I know they do, and everybody's entitled to their own opinion. Just like I am here on the eleven thirty podcast talk pro wrestling. But nonetheless, yo Stone Cold coming back. Ah man, what do I even? What do I even? <laughs> Where do I even go with this? Um, the end of Monday Night Raw, or just Monday Night Raw this week, was it wasn't even bad. But we ended Monday Night Raw with KO coming out there. Like you say, he, he lost the triple threat matchup earlier in the night, which lasted about what forty minutes or so, and it was great, man. It was really great. Uh, but yes, Kevin Owens. And Seth Rollins had the goal that we're going to go on to WrestleMania as tag team champions. And nah, that wasn't happening at all. That wasn't, that wasn't happening at all. And it shocked me that RK Bro won because I thought that the Alpha Academy was going to win that all the way. I was like, okay, Alpha Academy got this. They got this all the way. You know, they, they entertaining. I know they, they suck. You know, they heels. But I dig them. You know, uh, uh, thank you. <laughs> you know, I dig them. You know, and, and but RK Bro came in and they, they won that. But I didn't think they were going to win either because you know it was rumored that RK, you know, Randy and and Riddle was going to go one on one at Mania. So they kept building this up. And the prior week to Monday Night Raw, I knew something big was going to happen in that matchup because they talked about it when they first came on Raw the prior week. So Kevin Owens lost. He's sitting by the step. So he's like, man, I don't know what I'm gonna do. Seth Rollins, man, that, that visual of him just leaving and the WrestleMania sign in the background was perfect. Like, perfect. Now, what's Seth Rollins going to do at WrestleMania? That's just to be seen. That's just the, you know, we got to wait and find out. But for KO, he said, yo, man, at the end of the show, I'm going to tell you what I want to do or what I got to plan. Look, it came to mind and, aha, this is what I want to do at WrestleMania. Well, I got something. I got something in mind, and I'm going to tell you later on tonight. night. So that night came, and he came out there, and, you know, he ran down Texas once again, and he threw out a challenge to Stone Cold Steve Austin to come on the KO show. Now and everybody was saying, yo, this is going to be a matchup, Kevin, Kevin Owens versus Stone Cold Steve Austin. Look here, I'm a fan as much as you all are fans too. And yeah, I want to see Stone Cold come out of retirement, maybe for one more match. And everyone's saying, yo, man, the age he at right now, there's no need for him. You know, and, you know, rightfully so. He was one of the greatest superstars of all time. Last matchup was against The Rock, bro. Look where The Rock at right now. Like, he and Hollywood doing his thing. Like, Stone Cold don't need to wrestle again. And Stone Cold said, and this is the thing I always went on, Stone Cold said, like, yo, if I'm coming back to wrestle, it's going to be something big. It's going to be something major. It's going to be something with a big superstar. Now, I'm not saying Kevin Owens is not a big superstar, and I know some of you probably saying he ain't. <laughs> but Kevin Owens... I don't think he was Stone Cold worthy. Now, yeah, kudos to Stone Cold giving Kevin Owens the uh the 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 okay to use the stunner, but I mean I don't know. <laughs> and, you know, I, I really don't know. I don't I don't think it really sells if, if Stone Cold was to come back and maybe do a run, but he only wrestled maybe four times up until next year WrestleMania. I mean, Kevin Owens is a is an okay start, I guess, but I, I don't know. Like, I don't know. But they said they're going to do the KO show, and which I feel as though they're going to uh, build it as the KO show, but it's going to turn into the match. It's going to turn into a match. You know, it's going to be like where uh, Kevin Owens 
and Stone Cold will have a promo, maybe not this Monday on Raw, but the next Monday on Raw. So, you know, Stone Cold can gather all this stuff up and be like, yo, I'm going to be hitting to Monday Night Raw to open up a can of whoop ass next week on Raw. And that's the bottom line because Stone Cold said so. Yeah. And, and that's it. And he shows up next week on Raw. They talk trash and they talk trash the whole, the, you know, all the way up into Mania where Stone Cold, he wants a match because he's getting provoked. You know, like, long as you don't provoke Stone Cold, you all good. And he already been provoking him, you know. And, and if that's the case, if they do just the KO show, I got a feeling if they're going to do the KO show night one, Saturday, and have the matchup night two. You know, I don't know speculation, fantasy booking. It's all fun and games. But in, at the end of the day, look here. We getting Stone Cold at WrestleMania with the KO show. It's guaranteed some stunners, some beers, and some what? Some some what I said some what <laughs> some stunners some beers and 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 that's gonna be that man for real that is gonna be that bro but uh yeah Raw was dope man this past week man and yeah so we gotta we gotta uh wait and see man we got what two weeks left two and a half weeks left for WrestleMania so I am definitely definitely excited for uh WrestleMania to come up man I don't know about you guys but. I'm definitely excited, man. Uh, WrestleMania matchups already has been announced. We got Edge. We got Edge taking on AJ Styles. Edge came out there in a dark, phenomenal. And he came out there. Edge came out there in a dark, dark look this past Monday, sort of with the Undertaker lightning in a way. Um, but yeah, man, we got that matchup at Mania Edge versus. AJ Styles, AJ Styles is supposed to have a concussion, contusion, whatever. So that's going to fire AJ Styles up because he injured AJ Styles. So now I'm definitely going to bring you the Bulldog or whatever Edge is calling out of AJ Styles to bring to WrestleMania. Uh, yeah, we got that match. Uh, Rhea Ripley and Liv Morgan has been added to the Triple Threat Women's Championship Tag Team Championship matchup with Sasha Naomi. And also Carmella and Zelina Vega. Um, and, you know, a bunch of matches. Obviously, the Tribal Chief defending against uh, Brock Lesnar. Unification, title for title. Uh, rumor is, would it be a new title? Would it be a new championship? Will they bring back the big gold belt? I just hope they just move forward. I don't know. But was something new and great. Uh, Ronda Rousey, uh, she had a matchup with Sonya Deville this past month, this past Friday, last Friday on SmackDown to end SmackDown. So she's going to take on Charlotte. I uh, mean, just a bunch of matches, man, for real, a bunch of matches. I want to tell you guys right now, um, I haven't made it official just yet, but March 31st, that Friday, or I will probably do April 1st. Uh, WrestleMania Saturday. Well, I, I'm still getting, but that week's pro wrestling, that week's talk pro wrestling will be a live edition of talk pro wrestling. So please stay, um, stay, stay tuned to the 1130 podcast social media uh, pages at the 1130 podcast on uh, Instagram. Uh, follow the 1130 podcast on Facebook so you can learn more when I will be going live for that WrestleMania edition of the 1130 podcast Talk Pro Wrestling. So stay tuned, man. That's going to be dope. That's going to be dope. Uh, speaking of dope, I was just mentioning SmackDown, you guys, and it is Friday tonight. SmackDown is uh, going down, man. It's going down. But last week on SmackDown, it went down as all. It went down also. Ricochet had a championship matchup with Sami Zayn. Everybody been wanting to see Ricochet win a championship in WWE for a long time. Man, they ain't doing the guy right, man. What are they doing with Ricochet? Blah, blah, blah. Ricochet pulled a big win over Sami Zayn. Yes, yeah, Sami Zayn was uh, uh, distracted by Johnny Knoxville, Jackass Star, uh, and Sami lost, lost the IC title. And uh, man, Ricochet is a new Intercontinental Champion. So what we gonna see at WrestleMania? I hope we see some type of like ladder match, six way, six way ladder match or something like that. You know, the, to fill up WrestleMania and do something with the guys, or you know, have Ricochet, I guess, go up against somebody. You know, I don't know. I really don't know, but we're gonna see what goes down on SmackDown tonight. 
Yo, uh, <laughs> last week on SmackDown with Roman Reigns, man, he was like, Brock Lesnar is going to acknowledge me. And they showed um, on their Instagrams and they showed on their social media accounts at the Madison Square Garden event. I thought that was wild, man. Like, WWE tickets are not selling that much. Like, they 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 not selling that you had to advertise the house show on TV. Like, you're one of your biggest house shows events throughout the calendar year. You got to advertise on TV. Like, I thought it was a special live event on a Saturday. But, no. <laughs> you feel me? They going to advertise Brock Lesnar. I mean, Bobby Lashley, know damn well he ain't going to, he wasn't going to be there. So, he, Brock Lesnar beat up uh, Austin Theory which Austin Theory is going to take on Pat McAfee at WrestleMania. So we're going to see more of that unfold maybe tonight on SmackDown. But yeah, man, I was just like real confused. Like, and Brock Lesnar, you know, he, he gets attacked by Roman Reigns. And that old, you know, that was just, okay. <laughs> okay. All right. We on the road to WrestleMania, though. <laughs> but you guys, man, yo, this has been a great show here. Just talking crap, having fun here. With some pro wrestling, you dig, man? I thank you guys for tuning in this week, riding solo, dolo. But you know, with me, man, that's all cool because I love talking pro wrestling, giving my thoughts. Love him when you gotta say always in the comments, man, on YouTube. Tell me what you think. Thank you for guys leaving a five star review on Apple Podcast. Make sure you follow the 1130 Podcast Talk Pro Wrestling on Spotify. If you're listening on Spotify. I appreciate it so, so much, man. Before I go, my man, Big Beta. Yes, man, Beta is going into the 2022 WWE Hall of Fame along with the Phenom, The Undertaker. Yeah, man, yeah. A lot of people was like, The Undertaker is going in solo, dolo. And I was like, if he does, like... I don't really like that. I mean, like, respect hats off to Taker, you know, greatest ever done it, like, for real, big man of all, all that, like, but somebody else can, like, they can fill up that, you know, class and do their thing, man, like, but shout out to Vader, he's gonna be in it, Taker headlining it. It's a two-for-one night, March 31st, with those SmackDown in the Hall of Fame, we're gonna see how they do that and, and stuff. Then they got NXT stand, take over, stand and deliver at 1 Eastern here on the East Coast, so, man, it's a lot, man. It's a lot. Speaking of a lot, I'm getting hoarse. I've been talking for a minute. <laughs> I love wrestling, man. I hope you guys do. That's probably it, yeah, man. For real, this has been a dope episode. But before I go and head on out of here, you guys, don't forget to follow The 1130 Podcast on all social media platforms. Follow me on Twitter at The 1130 Podcast. Like The 1130 Podcast on Facebook and subscribe. Yes, if you haven't done so already and you enjoyed this fabulous episode, subscribe to The 1130 Podcast here on YouTube. Yes, like, leave a comment, and do all that great stuff, man. Yo, and also you guys, The 1130 Podcast main show streaming this Wednesday, this upcoming Wednesday, you guys, on EB Radio and YouTube. It's going to be a great, great show at 1130 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Tune in, man, for real. Tune in. Also, the 1130 Podcast Apparel Store. Man, some new gear is coming soon, you guys. Yes, man, the spring is coming. The weather about to break. Some new gear is coming. But for right now, head over to the 1130 Podcast Instagram page, man. Hit the link in the bio. Get you some gear. Man, for real, get a shirt. Support the 1130 Podcast the long way, like all my guys do. Shout out to Blackheart, Warren Marlowe, Kenneth Stones, my guy RG, from the infamous uh, Mini Hats podcast, the Dirty Hills, the Clock Street Wrestling, uh, Jabba Tears. Shout out to all my independent wrestlers out there. All the wrestlers out there, they do their thing each and every week, man, for real. And shout out to all the fans, man, who just love wrestling. That's it. Love wrestling, man. That's it. Like me, man. I love wrestling. <clears throat> I'm about to get on out of here. <laughs> I'm about to get on out of here. Yo, this was another dope one. Don't forget to follow the 1130 podcast on all social media platforms. Once again, man, yo, this is your man, Dre, a.k.a. Dre on wheels. Stay safe, stay blessed. Give all the glory to God, man. Won't he do it? Yo, man, I'm out.